tell you about functions. And the definition of a function is the relationship between two mathematical sets in which each member of one set, the domain, corresponds to a single member of the other set, the codomain. And the domain is x, and the codomain is y. To tell if a function is really a function, you have to use the vertical line test, or it's one way you can tell. In this function, a vertical line can only cross the function at one point, right there. That means that it is a function. In this function, all right, when you put the line down through, it touches it twice at two points, and that means that it can't be a function, so it's actually not a function. And that is the vertical line test. Discussing, discussing piecewise functions and absolute value functions. Piecewise functions are, is a function that has different parts to it, and each part applies to a different interval of the x, of the x values. For, in this graph, the first part of this piecewise function is negative x when x is less than zero. And you see that here when you see the negative x graph and it's from negative infinity to zero. And then the ne that's where the next part of the piecewise picks up at x squared when x is greater than, zero, greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to one. You see that here with the red part as, as a part of a parabola and it, and it transfers the graph from the first part of the piecewise to the second part, or the third part. The third part of the piecewise is 1, the f of x equals 1 when x is greater than 1. So you see that here, you see y equals 1 as when x is greater than 1. So from 1 it picks up and continues to go until infinity. Next is absolute value functions. You see here f of absolute value of x. And the best way to define this is is regardless of what the x value is plugged in, y is greater than or equal to zero. Um, this is best shown through the comparison of y equals x and y equals absolute value of x. You see this graph that y equals x, x when x equals negative one, y equals negative one. When x equals zero, y equals zero. And then when x equals one, y equals one. Now, if you look at the absolute value function, when y equals the absolute value of x, you never see a point on this function fall below the x-axis because it is always greater than, y is always greater than or equal to zero. See, you see this in the table. x is, when x equals negative one, y equals one. When x equals zero, y equals zero. And when x equals one, y equals one. You see these points, and you see how it changes when x equals negative 1, y equals 1, as opposed to in the y equals x, when x equals negative 1, y equals negative 1. So that's how we apply an absolute value function. Okay, next we're going to talk about even and odd functions. For even functions, that even function is a function that f of negative x is the same thing as f of x. So for every point that you have x, y, you have another point that has the same y with the opposite x value. For example, y, of x, y equals x squared would be an even function because on the right side of the y-axis, you have this line, and then if you flip it over the y-axis, you have the same line going the other way. So if, like, for here, like 1, 1, that would be negative 1, 1. So you have the same points on each side of the y-axis. And then odd functions are f of negative x equals ne f, negative f of x. And then that means for every point x, y you have, you have another point that's the complete opposite. So it's flipped over the x and the y axis. For x or y equals x, you would have just a line. So then you have a point like 1, 1. Then you would flip it over like 180 degrees and you have negative 1, 1. So it's the same line. So if you flip this function 180 degrees, you still have the same function. And then lastly, we're going to talk about composite functions. If I could put it back on the thing. Composite functions are basically a one function inside of another function. So for example, we have f of x equals 2x and g of x equals x minus 3. So then to find f of g of 0, first you would take your 0 and plug it into the g function, which would be 0 minus 3, which is negative 3. And you take that answer and you plug it, the negative 3 into the f, so you have f of negative 3 equals 2 times negative 3, which is negative 6. So your f of g of 0 would be negative 6. 
And the same thing works if you're trying to find a g of f of 3. You would take your 3 and put it in your f, which is 2 times 3, and that's 6. And you plug your 6 into your g, which would be 6 minus 3, which equals 3. So then your g of f of 3 would just equal 3.